I'd like to open up the Monday, March 20, 2016 workshop meeting. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Councilmember Warner? Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer or a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. The first item is manager's report on issues raised at prior council meetings. Thank you, Ms. Dye. Uh, a previous council meeting, it was brought to the attention or re request from resident Rita Morano about the management structure of the Springwood Avenue condos um, the board consists of two members of interfaith and one appointee um, of the city it appears to be city staff right now is Tony Nuccio we'll be meeting with interfaith in the next couple of weeks to discuss how these board members are actually chosen because it's not in the ordinance it might be in a redevelopers agreement and the insurance requirements to make sure everyone is up to snuff but that is the only follow-up from the last meeting thank you we're on now on to special events applications. Alicia. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application is a carnival to be held May 26th to 30th in Bradley Park. Normally, this is held in Atlantic Park, but with iStore making improvements to the park, um, it couldn't be. So a meeting was held last week with the city manager, Brian Chiripka, uh, Pastor Lydell Aikens of Triumphant Light Church, and I start agree to remove the sprinkler heads in Bradley Park, assist with the markouts for the sprinkler lines, and to repair if there was any damage done to the sprinkler system in Bradley Park. Uh, Pastor Akins was agreeable to this, as was the city manager and the special events committee. So that's the reason why it's being held in Bradley Park. Next is a request to have a block party on Bangs Avenue. Um, this is spearheaded by Red Moon Life and Home Store with the goal of highlighting businesses on that end of Bangs Avenue. It would be held on May 22nd. Third is uh, the beer garden, a request to, to hold um, basically a block party to celebrate my fest. And this would be held on May 20th through 22nd at Press Plaza. In conjunction with that is the next application. They would also like to do a beer run on Sunday, May 22nd, in conjunction with the My Festival. I think they changed it back to Saturday. Okay. I, I saw a late email. Right. I thought it was, okay. Okay. I'll confirm that. Yeah. I thought Whatever it was Sunday. Is, okay. Okay. Next is the Asbury Park Mermaid of Parades, which will be no, held. you're right, Lucia. You're right. Sunday? Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Right. Okay. <laughs> Next is the um, Asbury Park Mermaid of Parades, which will be held on um, August 27th. Uh, this will be their second year returning, and it will be emphasized to the applicant that this is, does have to be a family-friendly event. Safe Summer event. This is sponsored by the city and CDI, and the purpose of this event is to um, for service providers providing uh, particularly summer programming to the youth in Asbury Park to interact with the parents of Asbury Park. So the parents know what's available for the children during the summer months. Mm -hmm. And next is Month of the Young Child, which is the annual Board of Ed preschool parade, which will be held on uh, May 13th. Usually their ending location is Atlantic Park, but again, since work is being done in the park, it's being recommended that they end in Sunset Park. And next is the Garden State Equality Walk to be held on June 18th. They will meet in Kennedy Park, walk down Lake Avenue to the boardwalk, up to Convention Hall, and back to Kennedy Park. And lastly, we have two weddings. 
one on May, both on May 21st, one on 7th Avenue Beach, and the other on 2nd Avenue Beach. Lisa, some of these um, didn't have fees on them, and maybe we were just saving dates. Like, the only one that has a fee is the AP Mermaid. Then I apologize for that. They should have the fees because okay. all the application fees have been paid. Okay. okay. My apologies. Okay. Lisa, on the 22nd, there will be two events. One, the Bangs Avenue block party blocking yes. off part of Bangs Avenue. Correct. And, and then, and also, the beer garden would have something closing Press Plaza. Is that going to close what street? Is it going to close? It's Emory? just going to close Press Plaza and that small portion of Bangs Avenue um, at Cookman. Bangs from the end of Steinbach to Henry. Just the one block, trying to get attention to the stores on that block, and they, they both know it's the same date. We're both working together. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on to review of agenda items for Wednesday's meeting. I got a couple things, but I'm going to go first. Yeah, go ahead. If you're ready, whoever's ready, go. Um, 216-164, resolution authorizing the cancellation of municipal tax sale certificates due to erroneous block and lot. I just was curious what happened there. The tax sale certificate had two or three um, block and lots on them instead of having just the correct one, so we're just correcting it. Okay. And then there's 216-169, resolution authorizing the installation of surveillance camera and associated hardware along existing utility poles in the public right-of-way for the city of Asbury Park. Can I get a map of where these cameras are going? It says there's a the resolution. It's the senior center in the middle school. But can I, I just want to see specifically, it, it says there's a map in the resolution. Okay, I'll or find the, the map. map. Well, let me double check before I say that, but the, I, I believe the, the the resolution references a map. Yes, it says, where is the map and plan for installing these equipment has been approved by the city engineer. Okay. So if there is it's a map. It's going to be the build out map. Okay. And these two, there's two additional cameras being proposed because we're under budget. It's the senior center, it's uh, senior building and the middle school. And we'll send, I'll send out a map once I get it. And is there a projected completion date? No, not for these two. They're on target to complete everything by the end of this month, early next month. They're still on or ahead of schedule on a lot of things, and these are just going to be added on. And then 216-175, the resolution to adopt policies and procedures. That's the personnel. Yes. Okay. And then 216-174, um, I, I didn't really understand that resolution. Um, you and I know something's coming from, from it's the It's on day. your desk. Okay. It's on your, on your desk tonight. Where? Underneath your pile. Okay, right. so you know I can read this and then follow up if I still if I still don't understand it. Did you send me an email? Did you send me an email? I didn't yeah. get through all my emails today. Okay. okay. I can explain it if you want. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, back in 2004, if not previous to that, there was a line of credit between Asbury Partners and the city for condemnation and eminent domain. There's no reason for the line of credit to exist anymore because as part of the subsequent amendments to the master developer agreement and the waterfront um, redevelopment area plan, both parties have to agree. If we want to condemn, the master developer has to agree. If the master developer wants to condemn, the city has to agree. Okay. There's no point in having a line of credit when both parties have to agree and they would be required to do it via escrow. The line of credit was just if case the master developer wanted to do something, we'd have the money for our own professionals, which, is, okay. which isn't needed anymore. Okay. You know what you did send me an email. Now I remember. <laughs> I'm done. Just um, 2016, 165, and 167. Would you just explain those, please? Under for 165, under the state statute, you're allowed to charge if after the second tax sale certificate is requested. Uh, the city just never charged for the three, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh request. So this follows the state statute that we can actually charge now. 
and for 166. Um, every year the city should be establishing a resolution for service charges for return checks. No, 167. Okay. <laughs> Records were incomplete. We couldn't find some tax sale certificates. We didn't know where they were. Tyrone's gone through everything, the, the tax collector. So we need to reissue them, and there's a charge for that. Ordinance 2016-12. Just why, why is this an emergency? Just to get it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, just to get it in place as quick as possible for safety. Yes. Right. If I'm wrong, correct me. You have the ability to declare an emergency and um, not have to wait for the 20-day wait period that's required under the Faulkner Act following the adoption of an ordinance where it's deemed necessary for health, safety, and welfare purposes. So if council makes that determination and declaration that it's an emergency, the 20-day wait period would not apply. So it's our understanding that the police okay. have requested this for health and safety, and they'd like to have it uh, effective immediately upon adoption. And, and just so everybody knows what we're talking about, it's the ordinance redoing the bicycles, scooters, everything, where you have to wear a helmet, you have to have reflectors, you have to have a light. So it's just speeding up the process instead of waiting 20 days. That's it. Okay. 162. I just don't understand how the water company is saying they use zero gallons. And we're saying they use some. If they use zero gallons, then it should be turned over to abandoned properties. It's impossible for, I think, for a house that's even if you leave something dripping, so you don't lose a pipe in the winter time to use zero gallons. I wasn't able to speak to uh, Mr. McEwing today. We kept missing each other on emails and phone calls, but I'll get a clarification for zero on that one. Okay, so 176 and 177, we're not going to get tonight. We're going to get points there. Yes. And, and I can respond regarding 177. 177 is awarding, potentially awarding the contract for the pedal boat, the swan boat concession on Wesley Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, we put that on tentatively because the uh, proposal due date is Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And um, it depends on how many proposals are received and whether we will be in a position to make a recommendation to mayor and council to make an award that evening. But uh, we put it on as a tentative. It may or may not be coming forward depending upon um, whether and to what extent the city receives proposals on Wednesday morning. And resolution 176 is award of Springwood contract phase, Springwood Park contract phase two. Um, more than likely, we're going to pull that pending a couple more final reviews for financial, which I'll explain under my section as we move along in the agenda. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Now we're on to matters by council. Oh, I will. Very quick. I just want to thank uh, the Recreation Department in the names of Lisa Floyd and uh, Cassandra Dickerson for taking care of and, and sponsoring and organizing the uh, 81st Easter pageant on the parade on the uh, boardwalk. And thank all those people who participated and the winners. No, she took months to allow us to say. Okay. Sorry, Next. Jesse. Um, Michael, do we have an update on the parking RFP? It's due next Wednesday. So I have a couple hours scheduled, blocked in my calendar to review, um, see who responds. I anticipate calling some of the review members from the last 
and hope to have that on the agenda for that night. And what's the status of paying online on our website? It's good to go. Do you want to just say what people can pay online now? All taxes, sewer, um, regular taxes. It's just really sewer and regular taxes. Okay. And because some people have complained about the mercantile license and getting these late fees, just so I'm clear, Cindy, notices went out in November that your mercantile license was due on or before March 1. Correct. You were then sent a second reminder in January Correct. that your mercantile license was due. And so after March 1, then you were charged a late fee. Correct. So, okay. um, and I don't think Leisha's here, but we talked about putting the channels of APTV on the flashing sign. Mm -hmm. um, just so people know that they can, you know, we have a ton of community events on, on those APTV channels. Can we put that up on the flashing sign? The next, I know you don't change it every day, but when you change it. No, you it's, it actually works now, so we can change it. <laughs> okay. Um, when we were uh, running for office, we talked with people about uh, better ways of communication, and I think that um, Hannah's doing a great job online with Twitter and Facebook and social media, but the other thing that we talked about doing, and I don't know if everybody's still on board with doing this, was possibly doing um, yearly, bi-yearly, quarterly newsletters um, because of the high level of senior citizens we have who may or may not be online, who may or may not watch APTV, it was a way to send a mailer out. You know, I know that's probably expensive, so I don't know how often we could do it, but just kind of you know, catching everybody up on the fact that you can pay your bills online, whatever, whatever's going on in City Hall. Um, you know, I briefly talked to Hannah about it, um, but I was wondering if we could kind of get a plan to see if we could send out quarterly or bi-yearly um, newsletters to residents in Asbury Park. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I was doing the math in my head, sorry. And then the last thing I wanted to thank Madison Marquette and Tim Donnelly and everybody who put on the Cold War. Um, I, I was at work, but from what I heard, it was a really fantastic event. That's it? That's it. It was a fantastic event. Uh, couple questions. Everybody loves the new boardwalk lights. I love them also, but I just wanted on public record for everybody to hear. They're guaranteed up to winds of how much? 120 or 130 miles per hour gust. We're waiting for the cross sheets from the manufacturer. But he's told that to the city engineer. He's on vacation this week. Once we get the cross sheets, they'll be provided. Okay. I've noticed it several weeks now, and I noticed it more this past week, the Easter weekend and everything. As much as we've made mistakes with parking and we're correcting them every day, we still have a major mistake where I had to go downtown Friday night, I went out to dinner Saturday night, and I parked in the City Hall parking lot, and it's virtually empty. So we have to do a better job of letting people know City Hall parking lot is open. I mean, I was down at a restaurant on the way down on Cookman Avenue, and people were going around like vultures looking for a parking spot, a circle and circle. And when I left, it was like 8 o'clock, there was like 45 open parking spots right here. And I'm up there in age, and if I can walk from here to my restaurant in five and a half minutes, it's not that much of a walk. So I, if we need better signage, if we need if we need the restaurants and the businesses to help us advertise, hey, can't find a parking spot? Go to City Hall parking lot. It's wide open. But that definitely needs to be done. And to that point, so if you left at 8, I came at 8 for dinner, and <laughs> the parking lot was also bare, and then got left dinner at 9.30 and there still wasn't many more people in the parking lot. So that's just a word we have to get out. I don't know how we do that. And have we heard anything from Gary, what's his name, from the state? No. Oh, I guess we're never going to. Even if I keep on saying his name, I forget his last name tonight. The last thing he reached out to me was they couldn't find their copy of the agreement between us and them and asked me for it. Okay. Uh, last thing, okay, with the talking of a skateboard park and everything else, I think 
whatever happens there is going to happen one way or another. But I think we learned a couple stories. Number one, I think our signs are unfriendly that they say no picnics at parks. I think our signs are inconsistent where some parks say no ball playing and others don't have them. So how do we start cleaning up that mess? First of all, take it down. Do we have to, was it done by ordinance, no picnics? So do we have to reverse the ordinance saying no picnics? I mean, what do we have to do to make the parks more friendly and usable? I'll sit down with the DPW superintendent. Um, we have a meeting scheduled next week and I'll bring it up. Of, we've talked about when he, he was first hired about trying to find a way to do a sign inventory of all the city signs, the, what they say, how they look. Um, replacing them, refacing them if needed. This will just go on to that agenda. I, th I think if you could move these up to the top of the agenda, it would be appreciative. So, again, sometimes you start off with question A and you get the answers to questions C, D, and E. So I mean, so question A was asked, but we found out we have problems with B, C, D, and E. And really to have parks and say no picnics is like, mm. I, can, I can understand no liquor, but no picnics is, we're going back to the 50s. That's all I have. Thank you. Matters by the city manager. Thank you, Ms. Dye. Uh, the workforce development RFP has been um, received. There was one respondent. I'm looking at it right now to, to possibly um, recommend to the city council to reject or award. Um, might want to make some tweaks. The cost was $119,000. Uh, that's the ballpark where I thought it would be, but you'll have a recommendation for the next meeting. Police accreditation was also out to bid. There was one respondent for that, the Rogers Group, um, at a cost of forty-two dollars or $43,000. That is being recommended by myself, the police department, and the GIF. Um, that resolution will be next month for your consideration. The city also received proposals for the LSRP, the Licensed Site Remediation Professional, for cleanup work at the Department of Public Works, which has been ongoing for a while. Uh, 22 respondents um, provided uh, applications for it. We're in the process of reviewing them. That will either be recommended for award or rejection at the end of the month. And lastly, number four is financial management consultant. Uh, myself and the mayor met with Mr. George Haber, the state's technical advisor, technical assistant for the um, transitional aid. One of the things that was discussed was a full-time CFO position, which is now more than ever desperately needed as there are three utilities and $52 million in budget. Um, the state, under the transitional aid application, has the ability to appoint um, anyone they want for fiduciary matters. But working with the state, um, it is recommended that the city hire um, Phoenix Consulting, which is the principal is Mr. John Reinhart, to lead the search for the CFO, the full-time CFO, um, at a cost of approximately $150, $150 an hour, which would take about 20 to 30 hours. Um, this has been signed off by both Mr. Haber and Tim Cunningham, the division director. So I'm recommending that we begin the search process of a full-time CFO. And that's for consideration for Wednesday. That's all. Matters by the city attorney. Yes, the only matter I was going to bring up this evening was actually already addressed, and that is the fact that um, the due date for proposals for the first of the summer concessions, the pedal boats on Wesley Lake, is this Wednesday at 10 a.m., and we may have a recommendation for award that evening. The next one to follow is the beach chairs and umbrellas, and the others will be following thereafter. I do want to add one thing. I'm sorry. Um, I just mentioned it for the Springwood Avenue Park. Yes. Currently, the city for phase two doesn't have enough funding to complete all the tasks. This is the base plus through the alternates. Um, we do have a capital ordinance for the revaluation that wasn't completed a couple years ago. There was extra money. So what we're going to propose is if bond council can finish it for wednesday do an introduction um, by title of a reallocation of capital funds which will then allow us to do the entire proposed phase two which includes the bathrooms the fencing all the vegetation um, and the digital sign so that would go into effect the first week in the first meeting in 
first or second meeting in April, and then it's an award. So it's a three or four week delay for the award, but we'll have the money to do everything with some additional money for change orders. I hope that digital sign's not like the Main Street digital sign. Well, that, at that, I think you not being part of the process, as much as they were alternates, they were like a wish list, like in something like, well, if Santa Claus doesn't bring it, doesn't bring it. But meanwhile, we don't want to delay the opening of Springwood Avenue Park because we don't have a fence and a bathroom because of cherry trees and a sign that we don't even give a damn about. So, I mean, we're not, we were told by our financial advisor, by the Acting City Manager months ago, correct me if I'm wrong, You're right. that we had <laughs> enough money to do the two alternates that we want. And the rest were just like, well, if we have money, fine. And, and plus, we were going to get a lot of in-kind donation for all the trees from... From Mama's Conservation Foundation. So, yeah, so we need a meeting ASAP to get this on the agenda Wednesday. It is on the agenda for Wednesday, and if you just want to award the bathrooms and the fencing, we should be fine now. Well, then, let's do let's it. Do I mean, it. we don't want this park opening in August. We want this park opening in May. And if it's not going to be on to the end of April's agenda because we're looking to plant shrubbery. I mean, that's ridiculous. Let's, let's get the bathroom in. Let's get the fence up, which we promised everybody, and open the park. Okay. And we were told we had tons of money to do that. And as far as the digital sign, I think I sent you an email, but I sent so many... I thought we paid the first contractor to run all the conduit because that was the only one that came in extremely overhead where I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be wrong, our estimate was like 40,000 and came in at 70,000. And I thought maybe they didn't know everything's been run as far as like, so that could be added down the road. But that's, I, I, the sign and the trees cannot delay this park opening too much, especially when we have the music series starting at the end of, May beginning of June. Okay. So if you have money for the first two, put it on the agenda and let's vote on it and let's get it going. Sure. Correct? Correct. And I know Yvonne and Jesse, Amy and Joe, you know, we've all been part of this discussion. I think Yvonne and Jesse more than anybody. And it was like, let's get the park up and running because we've been promising this we the city for like eight years and keep on delaying 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 is ridiculous what what i would do then is i'll double check to make sure there's enough money for a and b which is the bathrooms and the fencing and still recommend we move the money over for future improvements or in case there's cost overruns it gives us a little bit of leeway because we don't need the money that's sitting there for the revaluation anymore well we may i have no problem with that and that's okay. something we can decide down the road but instead of spending seventy thousand dollars for a sign if it's out of capital funds, I may want to buy a garbage truck instead of uh, something else, like garbage cans for the parks, instead of just saying a $70,000 nice sign that, you know, it doesn't work half the time because we didn't pay for Verizon. Okay. Sure. Okay. As long as you move it but don't spend it. Rather have the ability. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. And or something in if you want to because you, 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 you know you know how I feel about the park and I don't want to see any more delays because of funding especially when we were told that we had the monies required and necessary to complete the park and I'm really disappointed that we're fine I'm finding this out tonight but all right you can correct and, that. and these delays came way way before your time Michael oh, these, yeah. these have oh, been delays oh, absolutely yes yeah. and Unfortunately, I don't think you've been given the whole background, so you're learning some of it tonight. So, so nobody, we're not shooting the messenger. We're, we're shooting the message. At least you didn't fire me this time. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Any other matters? Can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Aye. All right, well, everybody knows the drill. Talk to yourself in a private <laughs> When you come up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. Each person has a limit of three minutes. Hello, Dan Melandro from North Beach. Uh, a comment on the new lights on the boardwalk. I think they came very nice. Uh, the nice thing about it is that they put a lot more on both sides of the boardwalk. The only concern and question I have, there are a couple right now where the lamps are tilted and with the high winds, it's nice to hear that the design is made for high winds, but what's the mechanism 
when we see something that's, you know, a light that's not working or it's out, uh, who to call? That would be me. And we are actually doing a walkthrough at 745 tonight to go through those project problems and issues. Um, and one of the things with the lights is that they are manageable, the, the candles. So right now those lights are at 100%. They really should be operating at 75%. We'll also be addressing those issues tonight. But at 6, 745 tonight, we're doing our walkthrough. Okay, there, there are two, Mike, on the north, the north side. I know I took down one number, number 59 is tilted, and there's another one further north on the opposite side that's tilted. And that's why we put the numbering on them so we know exactly yeah. where they are. Thank you. You are. And I think somebody put that on one of the social media sites, and I sent it to Michael, and he said it was because when they bolted it down, they didn't put the right bolts in. So it had nothing to do with the wind. It was more of a construction <coughs> error. So they, they will be corrected. And that's why I wanted it on the record, because Many years ago, when I worked for the city, we were told the traffic lights were guaranteed up to hurricane winds and 30 mile an hour winds. You still see no traffic lights on 3rd and Kingsley. So I, I want it part of the record. They're guaranteed up to 120 miles an hour. That, that's good. Yeah. But uh, not, you know, just again, a nice job. Thank you. And we thank everybody who's part of it. Hello, my name is Sharon Leak. I'm 1317 Washington Avenue. Um, the residents petitioned to pave Washington Avenue. Um, we undesigned residents of Washington Avenue are concerned citizens demand the city of Asbury Park immediately address the long neglected conditions of Washington Avenue and completely pave the entire street from Prospect to Ridge Avenue. We understand the temporary inconvenience associated with giving us a pothole free road with proper drainage and curve and welcome the final results respectfully, diligently, when visitors and families and other people come to visit. I live on Washington Avenue, and I've been living there now almost a year. And I'm a longtime resident, taxpaying resident of Asbury Park. But I moved on Washington Avenue in August in a very nice house right across the street from Good Hope Church. And I moved there because I take care of my niece and her children, and we needed a bigger place. And that place was available to me. But when I moved over there, that street is so bad, like I'm embarrassed to even have people come to visit me. And not only that, they don't even want to visit me because they, they don't want to tear up their cars. And you really can't blame them because it's really bad to travel back and forth. And me and myself, I have a car that I have to maintain and um, it's expensive to keep my car in line. So I have a maximum and I can't afford those payments just for coming home, you know, back and forth to work and tearing up my car. And that street, from what I understand, has not been paved in years. So, you know, all due to respect, I have a petition signed here from, um, I went door to door um, on Washington Avenue, and then I also gave a sheet to um, the church, and they signed it. So I have a petition, three, three pages here, for, you know, consideration of that request. Are you done? Yes. Okay, I just don't want to cut off your time. There's no question Washington Avenue is in, I'm going to say, fairly bad shape. If, if you ride the entire streets of Asbury Park, you'll see many of the streets are in worse shape. Is it? Uh, are you, okay, I, I want to make sure you're here. I'll say yes. Okay, so. Okay, yep. Yeah. Washington Avenue is in fairly bad shape. Compared to other streets in the city, it's in great shape. Washington Avenue, the gas, either the gas company or the water company did a cut all the way down. Washington Avenue is one way going west, and they did a cut, I'm going to say, on the north side of the street where they paved over that, where half your street is basically driving. You can go up Sunset, 4th, 3rd, Park, Webb, everything. We started a road improvement plan, and it'll be, this year will be the first year that streets are actually going to get paved. In how many years? in many years and so Washington Avenue probably will not be on the first go around of paving but is on the list for the second go around and we looked at it but there are streets and worse. So what do you think that second go around would be in a year, two years, months? I'm, I'm hoping the second year of the paving plan which would be 17? 17 or 18. 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. and, well, and I'm not saying you're not correct, but 
there's no question. The streets throughout town, you can drive Drury Lane, Steiner, Webb, 8th. I mean, you, you see dirt. You don't see even pavement. Where at least on Washington, you do see pavement. Uh, Fourth, Fourth Avenue is atrocious. I live on Fourth Avenue. Well, I, I can only. And it, and it, was, it was a lie. They said they was paving the street. I can only apologize. Off the whole street. I can only apologize for what the water company told you. They told you something that was out and out false. But they blocked the whole street. But well, when, when we go to the, do Sunset Fourth or even Washington, it's going to be blocked for like maybe a week or two because you got to mill. You got to mill. That means removing the old, compacting it, and then putting down the new asphalt. So, I mean, it's not a it's not a 24-hour job to well, repave the street. Well, I did go door to door, and I asked the residents, and we all are willing to do that, because in the meantime, if we don't, the repairs on our car is going to cost us way more than just walking from, you know, neighboring areas to my house for a week. I do it for two weeks, as long as I don't have to pay the repairs on that car, because I can't afford it. No, I, I deeply appreciate it, and we are on top of it. And they say, in the last four years, I know a street has not been paved in Asbury Park. Probably longer. Right, so we're picking up the pieces. We can go out tomorrow, and I say, you know, we can bond tomorrow for $30 million and double everybody's taxes and pave everybody's streets. But I don't think you'll be happy about that either. So we have to do it gradual and like phase it in where we're not burdening the taxpayers by correcting like 20 years of mistakes in two years. We have to gradually do it. And we appreciate your petition, and we will stay in touch with you and let you know where we stand. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you for going door to door and getting the petition. Next. Go ahead, Rita. Hi. Uh, Rita Miranda, 8th Avenue. I wonder if there was a report on the senior building yet. You, you came in late. He gave it. But go ahead, finish your question, so we'll give it again. Uh, what is it? Oh, okay. Okay. The, uh, that was one question. The other question was on page six, the health benefits that are being paid to the employees that are long departed or gone or resigned and, or they're on vacation somewhere. One payment is $1,900 a month. I mean, I read the resolution. I know Cindy didn't write it because it's poorly written, and I hope the city manager is going to look at it. That resolution has to be changed. You have to drop it. These people that retired got everything coming to them and they signed off. How come they're getting payments now for their health plan? It's not right. It really isn't right. $1,900 a month on some of them? You think that's right? And it's the Cadillac plan. If you're going to have to pay insurance, you're going to have to change your policy like all of us have to do because you can't afford these payments. Uh, that's number two. Uh, my third question was, I know John was at that meeting that I went to. Could you tell me what that was about? <laughs> and that's it. That's it? Yeah. Well, let me go to the, uh, I forget the first question. That's me. Oh, that's Michael. Go. <laughs> well, I'll handle the second question. Rita, we've discussed it before. And I've tried to explain it to you. And I'm one of the people on that page six. I know you are. Right. When I retired, I had X amount of dollars left. Now, the city could have either paid me then, and we'll pick a round number, could have paid me then $50,000, or I could have taken that $50,000 as per a law made by the past mayor and council, approved by the state of New Jersey, saying I get that money towards future benefits for my wife and daughter, if needed. And I can only use it within five years of my retirement. I can only use it for a total of five years. So that was the law that was passed. So the city could have paid me that $50,000 then, or else I could have taken that $50,000 for future benefits for my wife and daughter. I chose the latter. Some people chose to take the entire cash payment and not choose the latter. I mean, later, latter. Uh, so that, you know the plan, and it, it was passed by mayor and council, I've told you before, 
since I was part of it. I had my attorney review it, and he said it's a good plan, but it will not fly unless the state of New Jersey approves it, which the state of New Jersey approved it. Uh, so that, that's the bottom line. And as far as $1,900 a month, that's probably, and I'm guessing, that's probably a family plan with children, and that's what we're in the state health benefits plan. I believe the state, under the MOU, requires us to be under the state health benefits plan, and that's what the premiums are. The insurance throughout the United States is ridiculously high, but that's what the going rate is. Now I'll let Michael answer question one. Uh, about that, uh, the, you have somebody on there that collects disability. Doesn't he get a health plan? Who's that? From the disability? I'm not going to mention names. Okay, I, I, I looked at the list and I, I sent the list to because there's people in there that are getting, that are listed on there that retired before this was passed by a previous council. What they're doing is they're paying COBRA. They're saying, I want to continue on the city's insurance. For them to do that, it's taken out of their pension check. So the state of New Jersey is taken out of their pension check, and the city has to make them whole by giving them the same amount. So there's some people on there, like the BM person who retired many years ago, not my relative, with an E, that that's what they're doing. They're, they have a COBRA plan. So he or she is decided, yes, I want the city insurance, I'll pay $500 a month, but it's coming out of their pension check, so the city has to make them whole. And that's state law. Now, as far as other people in there, I saw somebody was added, I saw somebody was dropped, and I have those questions in the finance myself. And I will let Michael answer question number one. Just because the state of New Jersey approves something doesn't make it right. Oh, then I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> they make the laws. So huh? if you want to change the laws, I suggest we all get a bus and go to Trent. But to change the state laws, we cannot do it here in Asbury Park. Okay, but have you considered changing the health plan to a cheaper plan? I, I think I already said the MOU says we have to be in the state health benefits plan. Hmm. Okay, Michael's going to answer question number one. Okay. Or two, I forgot one. Let's go, Michael. <laughs> the board is comprised of two people from the Springwood Development LLC, which is two people from Interfaith, and one city employee, which is Tony Nuccio, right now. Um, it's in their bylaws, which we haven't figured out if it's in the redevelopers agreement or in the ordinance. I'm meeting with Interfaith in the next couple of weeks to discuss their board. Um, and their insurance requirements. They do provide to the city an audit of their expenses every May, which goes to the CFO, and they provided um, copies of the meeting minutes and their budgets. But the board is comprised of two members from the, the LLC, which is two members of Interfaith, and staff person here right now is Tony Nuccio. No taxpayer? Since we have a condo? No. Well, don't you think a taxpayer should be on there? Nuccio doesn't live here. I don't know why they did that. I don't disagree with you. I know. You. I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying that's got to be changed. And they don't have meetings, do they? They have, they? Year, they have yearly meetings. They adopt the budget, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the budget is? It's Forty-four, forty-five thousand. I'll give you. The, I'll bring the documents for the next meeting. Okay. Can I get a copy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing, Amy said when she ran uh, for city council. Uh, you said she, your time was up. You're fit to me. <laughs> go, go ahead. Last question. <laughs> okay. When you ran for city council, uh, she, she said you made certain promises. What about the budget committee promise? That was one of them. I just wanted to remind you. Thank you for the reminder, Rita. Huh? Thank you for the reminder. Okay. Were, were you here when Michael said we're going out to search for a full-time CMFO? I, I was happy to hear that. <laughs> so was I. I made you happy, Rita? I made happy. Okay. I need your help, Robert. <laughs> Michael. Um, Jennifer Lampert, 905 Hex Street. Um, my first question was, have you considered putting walk, don't walk signs on Press Plaza and on Cookman. Like, I always feel like I'm gonna, you can't tell when the light's gonna change, like Hoboken and other cities, you know what I'm talking about? 
Like when you go across the street. Like the yeah, like the most yeah, like most cities have. It's just getting we're getting a lot of foot traffic in town, and I don't know. I just think it might be something to start thinking about moving forward. Um, so, anyhow, it's a suggestion. Um, and then the other suggestion is, uh, well, first, I really think it's it's really fantastic the committee that you're forming with the business owners in town. I think that's really really great and really needed. Um, with all the growth that's going on. But I feel like you missed uh, including venues. And I think you should consider having two representatives of the venues because it's the culture and like the heart of Asbury Park is the venues and the- uh, When you say venues, what are you Stone talking about? Stone Pony, Wonder okay. Bar, Paramount, House of Independence, The Saint, uh, the venues. Like all the things that are the convention hall. I know it's sort of very much Madison Marquette focused, but it's, it's, I think that venues and the events and the things that are going on in the city are super important to be a part of those conversations. Um, if it's not something that you do initially as the committee starts, it might be something that you would consider um, moving forward. Um, but I think the committee's great, so thanks for doing that. Um, and lastly, I was late, I got the time wrong. Was everything cool with the event that I proposed? We turned it down. Huh? You turned me down? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. We vote on it Wednesday, Jennifer, not just uh, FYI. But it's looking good. Thank you. A good, uh, Alicia made a, well, a good presentation and it was well received. Thank you. And you are working <coughs> together with the other closing of the street on Bangs Island. Yeah, yeah. That's I know. I, I told the crowd that. I reached out, yeah. Okay. okay. Tracy Rogers, 900 Monroe. Uh, on the budget, uh, in engineering, there's an increase of 100,000. I just wanted to know where that came from. And can anybody tell me how many units ISTAR has been given, permitted to, uh, to uh, build on, the actual permit as to right now what the, the number is? And we had talked about the uh, the oil, the grease oil, in the meeting, uh, Mayor. There are two companies that actually do pick up uh, recyclable oil. One is Darling International in Newark, and I'm trying to get the name of the other establishment. And once you get that recyclable oil, you can add it to your clean community dollars as recycling. And the cost overrun on the park. I, I didn't understand whether these these things are added now or were they in it and supposed to be paid for or is this they're actually additions, extra items that it's gonna be paid for. So I didn't I didn't understand what exactly those those items. But that's it. I start can build approximately 3,200 units in the waterfront. No, no. Well, they were reduced. That was reduced. In the no, no, no. They, in the plan, it's 3,200. It's, it's it has not, whether they build 3,200, they're not required to build 3,200. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. But they are allowed to go up to approximately, I may be off by 10 or 20, 3,200. No, no. What I was asking for is the actual permit number because it says an agreement per permit number is after they get to a level of permit number, they actually give the city a million dollars. At 600, they give us another million yeah. dollars. Yeah. Right, they're not, so, they're not close to 600. So not, not close to 600 yet? No, because okay. the hotel doesn't count. Okay, it's, yeah. It's it, residential I'm, units. Residential. Right. So what is the expected plan in the next year? Do we know? Well, the only thing we know they're building is the supposedly and allegedly, and which I believe is the 1101 site, which will not put them at 600. So that still hasn't put them at 600? No. How, do you know how close they are to 600? They are close to 600, I don't think. I mean, th well, I mean think about what they built. Vive, well, you got Wesley it, Grove. You got it, and in Wesley Grove, Grove, North Beach, everything. We, we, can we can get you that number. Yeah, we, I just need the permit number because yeah. I think that's money that's left on the table that the residents need to want. that's why we want them to get to that 600 so we get the million dollars to spend it elsewhere. And, oh, in the cost of, yeah, and everything else. The cost overruns on that park. 
There's no cost overruns on the park. The first phase is being completed shortly. This was for the second phase involving um, the bathrooms as the prime and then a bunch of alternates. To award all the alternates, we'd have to move some money around. But I don't know when you came in, but the council is requested of me to do um, the prime, which is the bathrooms and the fencing. And we're still going to move the money around in case there's cost overruns or for okay. future improvements. It's, we're hedging for the future, but doing today. Okay. Concerning the $100,000 in engineering, that is for the LSRP programs that we have to do. Um, the DPW site is, is quite honestly a mess. Um, it involves four test wells from 2013 for contaminants that needs to be reopened. Um, and we might have to drill some more test wells. And those are, you know, anywhere from five to $8,000 a pop, depending on what you have to do. That's, was that in the salary? The increase was in the salary? No, it's O&E. Is in expenses? There's an exp that's engineering expenses, yes. Okay. And just what Tracy was talking about was the grease oil. We're talking about, I didn't even know we started, I don't know what year we started. Michael obviously didn't know, but we're in a meeting and Michael did this and got in touch with Bill McClave. The city right now is letting restaurants bring their cooking oil to City Yard, and you as the taxpayers are paying to dispose of it, which makes no sense to me. When these restaurants are making a heck of a profit, why not make them get rid of it? And it hasn't been collected in two years. You can only talk once, so bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it hasn't been collected from DPW in over two years. Okay. So I don't know how much is there or how it can be. Yeah, so that we don't be. even know how much is there. Motion to close. Move it. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. Jen, now you can talk. But we're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>